Hey guys, welcome back to Signs and Wonders. Thank you all so much for watching, sharing, subscribing, and of course, thank you so much to my Patreons and those of you who have helped me spread this message. I couldn't do it without you guys, and I just want you to know that, so thank you. Oh, and if you're new here, please subscribe. Alrighty, my name is Nick, and this is your Christian Prophecy End Times News for July 14th, 2020. Lo, I am sending for many fishermen, declares Hashim, and they shall haul them out, and after that I will send for many hunters, and they shall hunt them out of every mountain, and out of every hill, and out of every cleft of the rocks. That beautiful reading is from Jeremiah, chapter 16, verse 16. So get this, guys, so many Jews are returning to Israel that the government is worried they won't be able to absorb them. Unlike immigration to other countries, Alim to Israel are welcomed as long-lost brothers, educated and housed at great public expense. A combination of coronavirus and anti-Semitism is creating conditions expected to bring millions of Jews home. But the Israeli government is already stretched to the limit. It's concerned that they may not be able to fulfill the prophecy in the proper manner. The Nasset's Immigration Absorption and Diaporsa Affairs Committee met last Wednesday to discuss a major dilemma. That is, Jewish immigration is expected to double next year, but budgetary constraints will make it difficult, if not impossible, to absorb them all into Israel's society. Israeli society, sorry. Earlier this month, Jewish Agency Chairman Isaac Herzog reported to the committee that an estimated 250,000 people, mostly young people, will immigrate to Israel within the next three to five years. Herzog added the number of people who have contacted the Jewish Agency about Aliyah from English-speaking countries has increased by 50% and by 70% from French-speaking countries. Israel could receive as many as 90,000 new immigrants in 2021, nearly three times the number of immigrants in 2019. The Israeli government goes to great efforts to help new immigrants with job placement, housing options, scholarships for new immigrant university students, and language skills. The so-called Law of Return gives Jews the right to come and live in Israel and to gain Israeli citizenship. Though simple in concept, the law raises issues of defying Jewish identity and, as a result, is controversial and complicated. Church of Satan sues Mississippi for wanting to write God on state flag. As part of the wave of tearing down symbols of historic racism, Mississippi State Governor Tate Reeves, a Republican, signed legislation last month ordering the prompt, dignified, and respectful removal of the state flag bearing the rebel symbol from all state property. Mississippi was the only state whose flag contained the Confederate battle flag, adopting it in 1894, nearly three decades after the Civil War. 64% of voters reaffirmed the flag in a 2001 referendum. So I guess democracy means nothing in the states anymore, eh? Even though people voted for it, they're just going to tear it down anyway. In the wake of the race riots sweeping across the country, Reeves decided to introduce the new legislation calling to redesign the flag. I know there are people of goodwill who are not happy to see this flag change, Reeves said. They fear a chain reaction of events erasing our history. A history that is no doubt complicated and imperfect. Yeah, but everybody's history is, is not perfect, you know? I understand those concerns and am determined to protect Mississippi from the dangerous outcome. Both chambers of the state legislature voted overwhelmingly for the legislation. Reeves Lieutenant Governor Dulbert Horseman and House Speaker Philip Gunn selected a nine-member commission to decide on a new design for the flag which must contain the words, In God We Trust. Voters will approve or reject the design by referendum in November. If approved, the new flag will be ratified and flowing next year. If not, the commission will meet again and decide on a new design. But apparently this plan to redesign the flag is not acceptable to everyone. Mark J. Randaza of Randaza Legal Group wrote in a recent letter to the Attorney General of Mississippi, Lynn Fitch, that his client, the biggest scumbag on earth, the Satanic Temple, has asked us to bring an issue of constitutional importance to your attention. We understand that your state is planning to take the very positive step of removing the Confederate battle flag from the Mississippi state flag. However, it is our understanding that the proposal calls for it to be replaced with In God We Trust, a proposal you seem to endorse. 
While the satanic temple supports the removal of the confederate flag, removing one divisive symbol of exclusion only to replace it with a divisive phrase of exclusion does not eliminate exclusion, but rather moves it from one group to a collection of others. Can I just say, who gives a flying frig what the satanic temple thinks? Like, really, man? These people are like the scum of the earth. I can't believe they're even allowed to have a temple called the satanic temple. It's absolutely disgusting. It just makes me angry just even reading this. My client, who is actually the biggest clown in the world, his name's Lucian Greaves, here's a picture of this guy, would like to suggest that if Mississippi is going to place a religious phrase on its flag, it should include a reference to Satan. Like, wow, man. Before you hand wave this idea away, I would like to draw your attention to the seven tendons of the satanic temple. And you know what guys, I'm not even going to give these scumbags the benefit of reading their disgusting tendons. If you guys want to google the seven tendons of the satanic temple, you guys can go ahead and do that on your own time. But yeah, I didn't bother including that because it's not even worth it. The seven tenets seem to be more consistent with Mississippian values than even the Ten Commandments, the attorney claims, that the biblical prohibition against murder can be equated to capital punishment according to Mississippi law. As another example of the state's legislation contravening biblical law, the attorney pointed out that the biblical prohibition against graven images would violate the First Amendment rights of free expression. Flooding and earthquakes devastate Chinese provinces as Yang announces wartime preparations. Yang Zing? I can't pronounce that. The Chinese regime upgraded its flood response alert to its second highest level on July 12th after announcing that 27 provinces have been affected by heavy rainstorms that continue to wreak havoc. Meanwhile, along thousands of miles of the Yangtze River, water levels surpassed alarm stages. On July 12th, people in Wuhan, the city where the CCP Communist Party virus first emerged, were using sandbags to raise and reinforce riverbanks, while some areas of the Yangtze reached more than 94 feet, more than 15 feet above the average ground level of the city. Wow. Authorities estimate that the river level may rise to more than 95 feet by July 14th, or more than 16 feet above ground level. Several towns in nearby Engzikzhou province were almost submerged by flooding. Meanwhile, the northern Chinese city of Tang Shishang experienced a 5.1 magnitude earthquake early on July 12th. The tremors damaged buildings that were made of poor quality material. That day, the counties of Lushan in Yunnan province, Zhuizhi in Sichuan province, and Wushan in Chongqi City also recorded quakes of magnitude 4.4, 4.0, and 3.0. Authorities announced that millions have been displaced with at least 141 people missing or dead. But given the Chinese regime's history of concealing information, experts fear that the true numbers are far higher. Southern China's Xingzhou province issued its highest flood warning on July 11th after embankment breaches caused several counties to be inundated. On July 12th, state-run CCTV reported that out of Xingzhou's 1,580 miles of river or lake banks, nearly 1,400 of those miles had reached above their alert levels. Particularly at Poyang, China's largest freshwater lake, levels were rising at an unprecedented pace. The water level of Poyang Lake has increased by over 53 centimeters every day in the past three days, according to a report that cited Zhu Wingmi, a top flood control expert in the province. Now it is over two meters higher than the alarm level. The Chinese Communist Party boss of the province, Li Qi, announced July 11th that the province had entered wartime preparations. Lee asked the province to prepare for heavy floods and a big catastrophe. China bails out Iran, turning Islamic Republic into Chinese colony. An 18-page document written up by the Iranian Ministry of Foreign Affairs entitled The Iran-China 25-Year Comprehensive Partnership Document was leaked to Iran Wire last week. Great, hey? That's just what we need, Iran partnering up with China. China has agreed to invest four to six hundred billion in Iranian infrastructure in exchange for dominion over Iran's natural resources for a 25-year period. Give me six hundred billion dollars. 
The document highlights the shared interests of both countries, which include the supply of crude oil, renewable energy, civilian nuclear energy, and petrochemical products. Ooh, that sounds nice. From an infrastructure perspective, the deal involves the construction of railways, highways, maritime connections, and banking cooperation with regards to local currencies. According to the deal, China will rescue the Islamic Republic from the economic crisis it is now embroiled in by investing in seaports, trains, smart cities, and other vital infrastructure. One of the main benefits that China will enjoy is Iranian oil throughout the 25-year agreement period. The agreement offers Iran unprecedented support from a world power and could, according to Washington's concerns, dramatically lighten the impact of US sanctions on Iran. Well, yeah. This agreement is being touted as highly beneficial for China as it offers a great economic deal for Beijing and a significant foothold in an area featuring geopolitical advantages. Coronavirus infects Vatican as first case reported. And Hashim said to Moshi, I will bring out one more plague upon Pharaoh and upon Egypt. Exodus 11 verse 1. The Vatican confirmed that a patient in its health services tested positive for the coronavirus on Friday. This is the Vatican's first reported case of the COVID-19. Reported, I hence. Matu Barini, who heads the Holy See press office, said that the Vatican temporarily closed down its outpatient services for sanitation purposes after a patient tested positive for the deadly virus on Thursday. Barini also said that the Vatican informed Italian authorities with updates. Pope Francis was tested for COVID-19 last week as a precaution. Unfortunately, the test results came back negative. <laughs> Just kidding. They came back negative. The Pope was sick, though, for several days with a cold. Oh, poor Pope. He stayed home last week from his yearly Lenten retreat. This led to rumors claiming that he was infected with the virus. Meanwhile, 16 million residents in about 15 provinces in Italy entered closure as of Sunday morning in an attempt to stop the spread of the coronavirus. According to the order signed by the Italian Prime Minister, the quarantine will remain in effect for almost a month. Okay guys, thank you so very much for watching and sharing. I hope you are all safe and healthy. Uh, if you're new here, please do subscribe and help me spread this message. Oh, also I designed some new merchandise, face masks, smartphone cases, coffee cups and stuff, stickers. Um, I'm giving 10% of all the proceeds to St. Jude's Children's Hospital. But of course, YouTube has not approved my new merchandise yet for reasons I don't know. But I'm waiting for a follow-up email, so yeah, look out for that in the next couple days. And again, thanks for watching. Hope to see you guys all in the next video. God bless.